Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is going to be a how-to for this system I've shown before uh, with a coil. It, it basically is a, um, a heavy duty jewel thief. I mean, it, it has the same action as a jewel thief. Um, it's just a bit bigger to allow running of you know uh, larger wattage lights um i got a little bit sick of the novelty of some of the jewel thief circuits so um i come up with this one which is pretty easy to replicate it doesn't have to be on a 3d printer spool because i know not everyone has access to empty 3d printer spools but um, I have given the dimensions for the coil, which you would wind on, you know, a piece of PVC pipe or something with stick two old CDs to the ends to hold the, the uh, wires in place like these uh, walls do on the 3D print um, spool. So, um, quick demonstration. If you, so it, it just uses the uh, single. 2N3055 transistor mounted on a heat sink. It does get hot if you if you don't want to uh, put the heat sink on. You probably blow up a few more transistors. Uh, one of my other videos, you can see the wiring layout for this particular light, and I placed it all along this um, connector strip. So that, that's in one of the other videos. I will um, have a schematic for this circuit. Um, I put up a sort of sort of a hybrid schematic with just a, a very rough picture of the coil itself. Um, but I have been asked a long time ago if I could put the correct schematic up. So um, I'll finally get around to doing that today. Um, this circuit doesn't have any capacitors. Um, it's just one component, this transistor and then the wire. So um, I'll g give a quick demonstration. The cameras never do justice for these lights because the CMOS sensor will detect that light and adjust it so that it can focus on, on the background. Um, but that's basically yeah, a, a very simple circuit to um, to build and operate. So I just put that to the side and the purpose of this video is really to just show in, in three different steps how that circuit is wound. So we'll unwind that. A lot of the confusion for me when I started uh, messing around with electronics was exactly that you know I'd, I'd see um see someone on youtube build a circuit and you know they could even explain it and have the dimensions and everything placed down but for some reason at start i still just seemed to get confused so this will be sort of a video creating in different steps so that we can just see how the primary is wound and the secondary and how many turns there are of each. So here we've got um, speaker wire. Okay, and it's connected together. It's just how it's naturally uh, produced. And it's lots of multi-stranded copper wire on the inside of this. So and I find it really easy to use because the primary is a bifilar coil. And you need to know uh, which wire to connect to where one of these wires has a black stripe down it and the other one doesn't so I've made it easier for us I've put the uh, uh, heat shrink on the end of this one with the black striping and then when we get to the other end I have done the same so that we can see where those connect uh, on the schematic um, all right, so basically you want to try and have the same 
at the start, the same, same lead up wire, length of wire at the start of this coil uh, as, as you have on the end of it. Uh, and, and that takes a little bit of juggling. Um, so basically I've cut two holes through the side of this to allow me to place that cable in there. And what we will do now is just start winding that around. You want to keep the coil flat, um, letting it twist over is going to change the way it operates. So that's not a good idea. So just for this first one in particular, if we hold it down, hold it in place, wind that first coil around and then just squash that into place. And we want to try and keep it as neat as possible. It can be done where it's not neat. Uh, you basically fit less turns on there. So if you're trying to achieve resonance, uh, you want to keep things snug, keep those wires together, keep them close to each other. Uh, as you go around, just keep pushing that wire over so that it's as close as possible. Again, ensuring not to twist this wire at any point, which is very easy to do. Okay, so we just go around and keep pressing that up against the edge. And so there's two wires here laid side by side, which will become in essence a bifilar coil. Um, you can use any any particular you know any wire just a single wire if you want two different colored wires it makes it easier at the end to um distinguish which wire goes where so just keep wrapping that around and i think uh this circuit ends up with nine turns with this form this uh, 3d print uh, spool ends up with nine turns of this um, two two strand wire, so you end up with, in essence, eighteen turns because it is a bifilar. There's two wires, and we're going to join uh, the two opposite ends together. Once we're done here. So there we go, we'll poke that out the corresponding or on that side. Now I've twisted that over there, so we just need to be sure that we've put that back in nice and flat. And so we can see here that it, it might be um, beneficial, we've got a fair bit of space left on this side. And not so much on that side for that to evenly lay flat. So I've, I've in essence done that wrong. So after the disappointment of realizing that I'm human, I um, realized that I came through the side of this instead of going through this section here where I've drilled a hole. So off camera I just rewired that. Um, and so if we finish that, place that underneath the hole, it's just neater if it comes from underneath. And we can get um, a much more uniform coil and a better operation. So they're relatively similar lengths on either end of that coil. 
if we now count those so we go one two three four five whoops one two three four five six seven eight nine ten by the time we get to here so there's ten turns on that primary and that's basically it so now if it's a good idea to wrap some electrical tape around that just to make sure everything stays in place and makes it neater for when you're winding your um, secondary coil which we will do in another video might just continue that all the way around and then we cover both ends probably use more tape than is necessary but we know that's secure on there we know how many turns the primary is so if we want to make a secondary coil we have all that information we need and that's basically it so now what would be we would be doing is joining the red to the black and we do that with a cable joiner and so these two ends here this red and black end become the opposite ends of this coil so once joined there the power comes in here for example runs right, right the way through comes back through this join and goes back again now I think uh, from memory uh, the other coil that similar to this operates around about 172 kilohertz so the switching time uh, here is you know, 172,000 times per second which is mind-boggling um, but we you know it's the higher that um, that frequency according to Tesla uh, the the more chance you'll you'll be able to pick up um, etheric power as well so power from its local environment uh, get up over the 20 kilohertz so what we'll do in the next video is wind the, the uh, secondary coil and then um, possibly make a third video which will be just on what goes where okay thanks very much for watching um, ask questions if you if you don't quite understand what's going on, I mean, this is relatively simple, but I do remember what it was like when I started. It was quite daunting, and I'd watch videos over and over and over again and still sometimes miss it, miss the whole idea or the concept or just how many turns or what was connected where. So if you don't understand, don't be afraid to ask. That's how I learnt. Um, and yeah, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe.